Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you all to the Bibliographical Society um, of Australia and New Zealand uh, conference um, for 2020, which is uh, being, being uh, run from Adelaide, South Australia. And I think it's without doubt the largest conference that the, the, um, the society has ever had. Um, and um, we are delighted to be welcoming people from all over the world. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the silver lining to this, um, to this situation that we find ourselves in is that uh, we, are now, we are now able to uh, welcome you all, uh, despite um, the, the blocks on international travel. Um, so um, we've got well over 200 people registered for the conference, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, we will be recording all the sessions so that you'll uh, be able to catch up again later um, or, you know, see them if you haven't seen them before. Um, I'd like to remind you that tomorrow at uh, 5.30 South Australian uh, Central, Central Daylight Time, it's called, isn't it? Central Daylight Time, ACDT, uh, Danielle Claude will be talking about her wonderful book, In Search of the Woman Who Sailed the World, which is about uh, her archival research, um, discovering this, the, the story of Jeanne Beret, um, 18th century traveller. Um, and uh, of course, we've got the, the, um, the society's AGM after the conference. So almost immediately the, the last um, session ends, I'll wrap things up and then we'll have a short 15 minute break or so. And, and, and at 1 p.m. Adelaide time, we will be starting the, uh, the Bibliographical Society's AGM. Um, so, um, so we will, um, do, if you're still not a member, it's not too late to join and to, to participate in the AGM. Um, we're, only, we're asking for um, only concession membership for this year. So uh, it's, uh, it's less than the usual uh, full price for a year. So we're very, we're very happy to, or the, the executive committee is very happy to offer that. Um, I'd also perhaps like to just quickly mention that uh, we would be, uh, uh, we're looking for uh, members, council members for the, for the different states and the different branches of the society. So um, certainly in South Australia, we'd, we'd welcome anyone who would be interested in being the council member and please uh, get in touch with me um, if you're interested in that. Um, so um, I would like to... Um, uh, welcome Veronique Duchet, the the, uh, the president of the Bibliographical Society. Um, ready now to talk? Yes. Well, thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you very much, Gillian, for your kind words. And uh, please, my name appears as Anna Welsh, but I am Veronique Duchet. <laughs> So thank you again, Gillian. I am delighted to welcome you all to the 2020 B Science Conference as the presidents of the B Science Society. I would like first to acknowledge that I am speaking to you from Melbourne on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation who have been custodians of this land for many thousands of years. The University of Melbourne is situated on the lands of the Wurundjeri and Wurundwurrung, the Jajawurrung people, the Yota Yota nation, and the Wadawurrung people. I pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging, and I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. As I just mentioned, I am in Melbourne, and you, conference attendees, you are in Adelaide or in many other places in Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. and I dare say, in the whole world. We are all virtually gathered to hear about cutting edge research in the field of physical and textual bibliography 
and the history of the written word and to share our passion for books. This is the first time in the 51 year history of our bibliographical society that we do not gather in person. I would like to thank the conference organizing committee for their exceptional versatility, Dr. Gillian Dooley, chair of the organizing committee, South Australia council member and from Flinders University. Tom Baker Stimson, who is Michael Trello antiquarian booksellers, Richard Moriarty from State Library South Australia, Sarah Stoddart from State Library South Australia, and Tuli Barnett from Flinders University. Together with Dr. Anna Welsh, BSAN's Vice President, and despite all the challenges brought by the pandemic, they have built a fantastic program, as you can see. Congratulations for this already successful event, as I can see that 73 people are currently attending. I would like also to thank the State Library of South Australia for hosting the conference in such difficult times, and our media team for the promotion of the conference, Gemma Steele, Dr. Helen Burns, and Dr. Jocelyn Hargrave. I am looking forward to the many papers that will be delivered during these three days and to the great lectures and keynotes, in particular Daniel Claude's public lecture offered in conjunction mm -hmm. with the 17th David Nichol Smith Seminar for 18th Century Studies. Mm -hmm. And I hope to see all B Sounds members at the AGM on Wednesday, the 2nd of December at 1 p.m. Adelaide time, 1.30 p.m. Melbourne time. Meanwhile, enjoy the conference. Many thank you. Uh, many thanks, Veronique, um, for that warm welcome, and and uh, thank you for for your um, for your thanks as well. It's um, it's very gratifying. Um, we've done our best, we hope. Um, so now it is my very great pleasure to um, to introduce uh, senior Ghana man Mickey O'Brien to welcome us to Ghana country, um, both physically and virtually. Uh, many of us are physically here, but many, many more of us are virtually visiting Adelaide today. So, um, so I'd like to welcome uh, Mickey, and um, and I hope that there we go. Thank you. Take it away. Willa. Mani Budnik, Willa, Wakina Padnik, Nina Mani, uh, Mari uh, Miyu, uh, uh, Kirora, uh, Waiwai Tapu, uh, Nai uh, Gana Vehicle, Mankalankala, Marawachanga Gana Mina, Minyana na Mani Puriji, Nai Nari Kamatri Marija, Nai Wangadi Mani, the Budni Gani Yatana, here in Diyata, uh, Tandendanga, uh, BSANZ, uh, Bama Bambaya, uh, Tiati uh, Wara, um, uh, History in the Books, uh, Future of the World, uh, Mukundu. So, hello and uh, welcome. And uh, it's wonderful that we can uh, meet uh, through the lightning brain, or as we would say, the computer uh today and uh, it is my pleasure as a descendant of the uh, ghana people and, and as an ambassador of the ghana people or the Miena or adelaide plains people that i call upon the spirit people of my ancestors to bring goodness upon you all and to send away that sadness that sometimes can linger upon us all but a welcome isn't just saying hello it is actually asking you uh where have you been and what have you been doing because our face tells us where we've been and our heart tells us where to go. What does that mean? Well, we can collect knowledge in our heads, uh, but we need to do something with that. And that's where our hearts come in. And that's when we do uh, goodness with that knowledge and wisdom. 
And so uh, today, uh, our people uh, have always welcomed people to our nation. And one thing we've never done, and that is ever said goodbye, uh, because we have no word for goodbye. We only say see you later, because we want to see you not just only in the physical, but also in the spiritual, because it is what we leave with each other that is of importance. No one person holds all the knowledge and wisdom in the world, it is shared. And that's what we're here today to do, is to share this knowledge and wisdom as we come to this place. So it's wonderful that we can come from different places and that we can share knowledge. And today I wanna to tell a story, a story about how uh, knowledge can be changed, how our information of truth telling uh, can be uh, important in understanding our future. Today, I, I have here uh, a picture, a picture of what is the Union Jack. It has three nations. It has three saints being St. George, St. Andrew, and uh, uh, St. Um, Patrick. And, uh, but uh, it represents uh, obviously Northern Ireland, England, and uh, Scotland. And uh, what's important uh, is that uh, image appears not only on the New Zealand flag, but also the Australian flag. But it also appears on the South Australian flag. But what's this flag that I'm showing is the second South Australian flag. And uh, I'm looking like, so I've got a bit of an image problem here. Let's see if I can get that up. Oh, why have I got image problems? Um, so anyway, there it, oh, there it is. And you can see that there's an Aboriginal person and a lady in there, which is really important. But we know this year is uh, uh, 250 years of a gentleman coming uh, to this nation. Um, but in South Australia in 1836, uh, a King, King William wrote this document, uh, the letters patent. And uh, this document uh, signified that he wanted the Aboriginal people and uh, the British people to, to own and occupy and share this land together with the Aboriginal people. Uh, but uh, sadly, in 1836, this didn't happen. But this year, we had this gentleman uh, uh, that uh, wore a bit of a funny hat that the, our Prime Minister is celebrating this year. It's a bit like this hat here. And uh, his name was uh, Captain Cook. Now, what's interesting is that uh, our Prime Minister's got him circumnavigating Australia, but he never circumnavigated. That was uh, this gentleman who wore a different hat. Uh, and his name was uh, Matthew Flinders, but he also named Australia, Australis being Southern land. But in 1836, uh, we had uh, people come to South Australia and they came in these boats, just like this one. And what people like to do is they put their flag onto the, the land. But when they came here, like Captain Cook did, they found a different flag, they found uh, this flag, a flag of the Aboriginal people, the red being the land, and uh, obviously the black being uh, the um, uh, people, and the yellow being uh, the sun or giver of life or hope, or as we would do, is welcome you to this land. And that's important to understand, that uh, we did welcome all these people, and we had many a nations come uh, prior to the colonised people. And the wonderful stories that we can find is by looking through history and we can recorrect uh, these things and tell the story, not just only from the colonized perspective, but also the First Nations perspective. So I hope you enjoy the wonderful speakers, enjoy this wonderful conference as it comes to you through the lightning brain being the computer. And so I leave you these words, my unjiga, my unjiga, nacho yukandaya, nacho yakandaya, potnia do madu, which means, uh, we are all brothers and sisters, that we can walk, we can sit, we can listen, and we can observe the land. And when we do so, the land will look after us, and we therefore look after it. Knowledge and wisdom is in that land, and it's the oldest thing in the world. And so cultures brings us together, never divides us. And so, like I said at the beginning, always say, see you later, which is Nakata and Nechaya. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming. And uh, may uh, the spirit people always bring you good blessings as you walk this land and keep you safe. Nakara Nechaya. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, 
Michael Mickey, uh, for a wonderful, warm welcome. We we we're very grateful to you, um, and uh, it was it was really lovely to uh, to see your your innovative use of uh, the, the, the 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 paper that we're talking about in our conference, um, and uh, the the ways that you are, were able to use that to um, to illustrate that point. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you. Um, now, um, I need to go on just a few uh, boring housekeeping things. Um, uh, of course, nothing about this conference is going to be boring, but um, the, the one thing that, that, that we do need to obviously point out is uh, we, we don't need to tell you where the toilets are and the fire exits, at least, but we do need to explain to you that um, a few things about the way the sessions are going to be run. They will be uh, each panellist, each speaker has a 15 minute or 10 to 15 minutes uh, is, is, the, is the recommended um, uh, length of their, their talk. Um, and uh, then after each talk, we'll allow um, up to 20 minutes for the, totally for their, for their talk. So if they talk for 15 minutes, they will get five minutes discussion time afterwards. Um, and um, and then, um, you know, possibly at the end of the session, there might be some, some general discussion. It just depends on the timing. We've allowed for quite lo long breaks between the panels. We've, we, we've allowed, we've tried to allow at least a half an hour between each panel just to give, give everybody a bit of a screen break um, and time to go and make themselves a cup of tea and get some lunch in the middle of the day and that sort of thing. So. We've, that's deliberately allowed um, that that space. But if we do happen to sort of um, go a little bit into that, I suppose that that won't be too much of a problem. Um, and we've got lots of information on the on the website of the the um, of the Bibliographical Society conference, which you all would have, will have received in in emails for you to uh, find out exactly what the, the running order and everything is. So uh, please review that website. And also if you are a presenter or a, or a, a delegate, if you've got any um, any queries about what's what's happening um, at, the, um, at any time, do please um, go and have a look there. Uh, and then if you need some, if you really do need more help, please, email the bibsoc2020 at gmail. Um, uh, use that email. Um, I might not be able to receive my own email while I'm while I'm chairing sessions and things like that. So that would be really useful if you would send all, all uh, queries to that email. There's just one um, thing I have to explain to everybody that uh, we have a change of the program. Uh, Jocelyn Hargrave was going to be um, coming in at 2.30 to give her um, her panel uh, talk at, at, um, at the, in the first panel session this afternoon. Um, unfortunately, she has a clash, and so at the last minute we've uh, called on our, uh, our dear colleague Richard Moriarty to do a swap with her. So Richard will be opening uh, after Lockie's um keynote speech, which will be starting very soon. Uh, Richard will be starting the panel sessions after lunch today with his with his talk and Jocelyn will be in his space, which is in session uh, six tomorrow afternoon. So that's just a direct swap. Um, let's hope there won't be any other changes needed to the program. Um, now, uh, what's, the, what's the time? We're a little bit early. Um, um, I'm not sure if we should uh, wait, Lockie. We should, we should probably wait for another five minutes um, before, um, I suppose, if everyone perhaps is, is there waiting anyway, so perhaps we could just... We can just start, and I can just start talking about about Lockie and his wonderful talk. Um, we were so delighted when uh, Lockie agreed to um, to give his uh, to give the keynote, um, and um, 
and uh, I'm sure I've got some bio notes for him somewhere. Um, he's coming to us. Now we can see how uh, how well prepared I am. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So Lockie is a professor in uh, Te Tamu, Te Tumu, School of Maori, Pacific and Indigenous Studies at the University of Otago, where he teaches uh, Reo Maori and Maori history. His primary research has involved uh, Maori language newspapers um, of the mid 19th and early 20th centuries, exploring the social, political and religious discourses promulgated within these publications. Um, and uh, he has um, many, um, many, many publications, including a monograph on mid 20th century Maori language news newspapers. Um, and uh, and uh, another thing about indigenous textual cultures reading and writing in the age of global empire. So um, it, it's wonderful to have you have you with us, Lockie. And um, we, uh, you know, we we're interested in the the sort of conversation that will that we've already started. I think with having um, um, Mickey, Uncle Mickey, uh, introduce um, the conference from from Adelaide's point of view. We, we're looking forward to hearing from um, across the across the Tasman what you 